In this video, we'll be advancing what we know about friction in Newton's third law by applying it to the physics of walking. Walking is dictated by physics and biomechanics. So when you walk, an action-reaction force and friction help in the process of taking steps. The process of taking steps is governed by internal muscle forces such as your hip and leg muscles, with a detailed lie in biomechanics which we won't go into. The forces that allow us to walk include gravity, action-reaction forces, internal muscle forces, and friction. We'll talk about these forces in this order. Let's talk about gravity first. When you walk, weight pulls you towards the center of the Earth. In response to weight, the normal force exerts a force upwards that supports you. Without this force, there would not be friction and you would not be able to walk. The two forces are balanced as indicated by the length of their vectors. Note, this is not an action-reaction pair. We'll talk about an action-reaction pair now. Now let's see what happens when you walk. Action-reaction forces allow you to move forward. So when you move your leg backwards, your shoe exerts a force backwards on the grass. According to Newton's third law, the grass exerts a forward force in response on your shoe. So the force on the grass from your shoe and the force on your shoe from the grass is an action-reaction pair. These are both static friction forces because the shoe does not move while it is in contact with the ground. Now, we'll use another example to further advance this. Here, we have a cat walking and we have the same action-reaction forces happening between the cat's paws and the ground. Every time the cat takes a step, there is a force that is exerted on the grass and the grass exerts a force on the paw. We have the ground on paw, which is the forward force, and we have the backward force, which is paw on ground. This is an action-reaction pair. As in the previous example, these are static friction forces. Since static friction keeps objects in place, we have to wonder what is actually propelling the cat forward. It turns out it's actually the force in the shoulder muscles that propels the cat forward. This is because the force, ground on paw, is equal in magnitude to the propelling force of the cat's shoulder muscles. The shoulder muscles exert a force that rotates the leg backwards, and in turn allows the torso to move forward over the static paw. So it's actually the internal muscle forces that propel the cat forwards and allows her to walk. This is exactly the same way humans walk except that the propelling force would be from the hips and thigh muscles. Walking wouldn't be possible without static friction. Why is this so? From our free body diagram, friction is in the direction of motion. You might recall that in previous friction videos, static friction opposes your motion when you try to move an object. This is true, but in this case, the static friction isn't opposing your motion, nor is it helping your emotion. It's simply an anchor point. Now, if we didn't have the static friction, what would happen? We have our cat taking a step in static friction, acting like an anchor point when the paw has contact with the surface. Without the static friction, it would be difficult to walk, and more like walking on ice with a cat slipping because there is no anchor point and no support. Let's review what we learned about walking. First, we have gravity pulling us down, but the normal force exerts a force upwards, which supports us. The normal force is also necessary for friction to occur. Second, we have an action-reaction pair created by two static friction forces. The backwards force the shoe exerts on the ground, and the forward force the ground exerts back on the shoe. This is due to Newton's third law. Notice that there are two forces on the shoe during walking, the vertical normal force and the horizontal static friction force. Third, we also discussed internal muscle forces. We said that the force the surface exerts on you, in this case, ground on shoe, is equal in magnitude to the propelling force of the internal muscles. We compared this in the cat and in humans. For the cat, 
The propelling force would be from the shoulders. In humans, because we are bipedal, the propelling force would be from the hips and leg muscles. Fourth, in relation to this, we said that when we walk, we have static friction in the direction of motion acting like an anchor point so we don't slip. So hopefully you've learned something and found this video helpful.